Israeli forces have abducted more than 200 Palestinians in the West Bank as they search for three Israelis they say have gone missing. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has accused Hamas of being behind the alleged abduction. Hamas, however, rejects the accusation, saying Tel Aviv wants to sabotage the formation of a Palestinian unity government that comes after almost eight years of division between two major Palestinian factions, Hamas and Fatah. Activists ask, is Israel trying to divert attention from a growing list of illegal activities, including administrative detention, continued settlement construction and collective punishment? They also say Hamas will not benefit from the abduction. I'm Homa Lezgi and you're watching the debate. Tel Aviv is conducting a heavy-handed crackdown against the Palestinians in the occupied West Bank as part of a search campaign to find three Israeli teenagers who Israel says went missing last Thursday. Roads are closed, houses are raided and scores of Palestinians have been detained. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the search may drag on, threatening that the abduction will have serious consequences. Tel Aviv claims that the youth have been abducted by the resistance movement Hamas. Hamas and other Palestinian officials have strongly dismissed the allegation. Back in April, the Palestinian factions Hamas and Fatah put aside years of differences and agreed to form a unity government. Many are saying that since some of the recently detained people are Hamas officials, the Israeli teen's disappearance and Tel Aviv's subsequent crackdown is an attempt by Israel to prevent the formation of the Palestinian unity government. Uh, well, until now, we have about 20, 21 members of parliament in Israeli jails. The, the last wave of these arrests are th this week, uh, 10 of them. This is, in fact, is directed against the uh, Palestinian democracy. They are expecting uh, that the Palestinian Legislative Council were to convene by the end of this month, and according to the agreement of ending the division uh, within the Palestinian ranks. Unfortunately, with the, these arrests, it would be impossible for us to convene because we have to respect the majority of the composition of our Legislative Council and uh, Hamas has the majority, we will not me, uh, convene when uh, they have lost their uh, majority because of the Israeli arrests. Criticism has grown against Israel for its apartheid policies towards the Palestinians. Tel Aviv is going ahead with its settlement projects on the occupied territories in defiance of international laws, which consider the settlements as illegal. The projects are also a major obstacle in the U.S. broker talks between Israel and Palestinians. Tel Aviv is also under fire for its acts of aggression against the Palestinians, including near-daily attacks, as well as administrative detention of Palestinians, which keeps them indefinitely behind bars without charge or trial. Palestinians believe that Israel is using the case of the missing teenagers as a pretext to lower the pressure it's been facing in recent months. They try to gather probably some sympathy from the world who is accusing Israel of the being disrupting the American efforts for reaching an agreement with the Palestinians. And they are also trying to cover up for the uh, confusion within the Israeli coalition. Israel is also accused of supporting Takfiri extremists fighting the Syrian government. Some observers argue that Israel is overstating the teen's disappearance as part of efforts to divert attention from those accusations. Palestinians say, regardless of what Israel's policies and practices are, they will continue their resistance against Tel Aviv. You're watching the debate. Joining us now live from Gaza is Professor of Al Azhar University, Mr. Assad Abu Sharh, and with us live from London, Professor of Buckingham University, Mr. Jeffrey Alderman. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us. My first question to a guest in London, Ms. Alderman. The search for the three missing Israelis has been described as suspicious, as you heard in that report. And uh, what's more, in an interview with the Jerusalem Post, a former MIA division head for the Mossad, Mr. Rami Igra, questioned Netanyahu's assertion that the Israelis were taken by Hamas. He said there's no clear evidence to support that claim and that Netanyahu's claims have more political uh, than uh, factual undertones. What's your view on this? Well, look, I, I don't know whether Hamas was behind these abductions or some other group. Uh, but I think uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and his government 
must take some share of the blame for the abduction of these teenagers, incidentally only one of whom is a settler, uh, because the deal done by the Netanyahu government to obtain the release of uh, Sergeant Shalit was a green light, surely. Uh, Israel was saying it's 1,027 Palestinians for one Israeli and once the Shalit deal was done th those who uh, uh, prefer abductions as a way of securing the release of Palestinian prisoners must have licked their lips because they knew that they had found a chink in Netanyahu's armour. So does that mean that uh, the suspect here then is again Hamas? Well, I, it, I don't know. It could be Hamas or it could be one of a number of groups operating clandestinely under the wing of Hamas. Uh, I, I read a report earlier today that the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade had apparently claimed responsibility for these abductions. I simply don't know whether that's true or not. Well, let's bring in Mr. Bouchard on this as well. Uh, Mr. Bouchard, uh, Hamas itself has been rejecting this, and it said in response to this claim by Tel Aviv, and I'll quote here, uh, Tel Aviv wants to sabotage the recent reconciliation accord reached between Hamas and Fatah. First of all, let's have your view about this abduction and the possible role of those behind it. Uh, yes, I think uh, Israel was not happy about the uh, recent reconciliation between Fatah and Hamas. And Israel is totally against the Palestinian national unity. But there, is, uh, there are other reasons now. Uh, Israel wants to justify uh, for her own people the failure or the fiasco, the total fiasco of her security branches for the disappearance of these three uh, uh, settlers. So uh, Israel in conducting house-to-house uh, -house search and then brutalizing the Palestinian people and uh, uh, rampaging through the West Bank uh, wants to give a message to uh, her own people that Israel is going to do her best in order to get uh, the settlers released. But nobody knows who actually, because no, not one Palestinian uh, uh, organization has claimed responsibility for uh, them. But anyway, I think if Israel were keen to uh, get her uh, uh, settlers, our soldiers actually, uh, released, I think Israel would uh, change her uh, brutal and aggressive behavior against the Palestinian people. Because yes. as long as Israel is brutalizing the Palestinian people, as long as Israel is imposing siege, uh, occupation, uh, is uh, uh, maltreating the Palestinians, uh, I think uh, uh, there will be always the problems. And the Palestinian people will not stand idly by. And they will, of course, uh, resist uh, uh, this uh, uh, brutality. And they will resist the occupation forces because Israel must have long uh, ended its occupation. And unfortunately, the Palestinians have been always waiting for the international community, for all people, to do something to end yes. uh, uh, their uh, sufferings, to end the occupation. But nobody listened to them, and always their calls uh, uh, fell on deaf ears. So probably there are some Palestinian organizations which uh, uh, held them back. Uh, in order to exchange him for our beloved ones in the Israeli jails. Well, uh, let's go to Mr. Alderman on uh, the next point that I want to raise here. Now, Mr. Alderman, uh, the same source that I mentioned in my first question to you, Mr. Rami Igra, uh, a former member of the Mossad, he said that uh, uh, right now the Israeli government is telling the Palestinian population what you have done is outside the rules, so now we're going to make your life more difficult. Palestinians' conditions, he said, in the West Bank have now changed overnight because the goal is to make their lives more difficult, to make it clear what happened is not acceptable. Now, that means, is he saying that collective punishment is a norm for Israel? Because we're hearing more than 200 people uh, basically abducted from their homes by Israel. They're being held without charges. Uh, it's being called administrative detention. And it looks like the situation now is uh, leading Israel to do more of these arrests, uh, apparently with impunity. Uh, well, c clearly the Israeli government has to respond to Israeli public opinion. Uh, and is Israeli public opinion will certainly be looking for some tough action here. 
I wouldn't call this collective punishment any more than I would call the British government's rounding up of IRA terrorists and holding them without trial in Northern Ireland was a collective punishment. But it's certainly a strong arm, that I will agree with. So, uh, so you're saying that uh, the administrative detention policy currently adopted by Israel is not illegal? It's not illegal, no. Well, uh, Mr. Abu Shaikh, what's your idea about that? Because, you know, we are hearing, uh, I'll just refer here to a letter by Mr. Saif Erekot on especially the issue of administrative detention. He said, Israel denies these people the right to see the evidence against them. The detention is renewable, has no upper limit, and prisoners are not informed of their release date and they do not stand any trial. What can you tell us, Mr. Abu Shaikh, about the legality of, of administrative detention? Actually, 